welcome my Taurus collective Sun Moon rising Venus signs welcome uh, to your timeless romantic soulmate read though doing it for the month of October uh, I am your reader Mark Angelo Lyons Mal for short professional witch professional intuitive president of Drawing the Circle Productions the Archangel of Lyons Mark Angelo Lyons but you can call me Mal. Hi, hello fellow Earth sign. I am a Virgo. If you're new to my channel, welcome aboard my subscribers. Thank you so very much for following along, helping me on my uh, YouTube career journey as a reader. I've been reading cards since I'm 12 years old for you new people. <laughs> I'm 52 and I know I don't look it. Witchcraft. Uh, but that being said, um, very, very grateful. Uh, my next goal that I'm shooting for on YouTube is 30,000 subscribers. I know, look at the numbers. I'm not even at two yet, but therein lies the point where you gotta have a goal in life. 30,000 so I can do membership, because guess what? There's an extended read for this one that we are about to dive into, but it's on Vimeo.com because I've had an account there for like four or five years now. So it's all set up, so you gotta jump over there. There's a link in the description box below. Um, so if you'd like to help me keep everything in one place, right, all on YouTube, help me get to 30,000, then we have memberships, then you pay one price per month and you get all the, uh, private membership only material, which of course would include, um, the extended reads. Cool? <clears throat> Enough of that stuff out of the way. Business done, Virgo that I am. Let's get up in this gig. This is a soul contract reading, but a soulmate contract reading, not a twin flame reading. There is a difference. There are links describing the difference in the description box below. I can say, in short, soulmates, you have more than one, certainly. You may have hundreds, depending on who you are in a given lifetime, uh, nor are they all romantic sexual. My mom and I have a soulmate contract, the foundation being of which we help each other heal. I was literally conceived to help her heal the loss of a child, my older brother, middle brother, I have an older brother, Matthew, there was Sean, and then there was Mabe. So uh, literally, I was, my intention was to help my mother heal. Here to heal moms, right? So that is a soulmate contract, and it is the same. It is mutual, it is symbiotic, it is uh, supportive, it is soothing, Cancerian that she is, not that we haven't had our arguments, I was hell on wheels to raise, but you know, I'm the youngest, <laughs> they let me juggle knives at the end of it all. Uh, that being said, we are looking at a romantic sexual soulmate read, because that's what everybody wants to know, and Lord knows that's the one I want to know about. Uh, because lifetime after lifetime, we've been incarnating onto this planet to kind of get, you know, like heal and grow. And what's the one that really we're having the hardest time with? <laughs> Those romantic, intimate, sexual uh, soul contracts, because I think they're just harder, right? It takes the, like a warrior spirit to walk the path of true love in some ways. So, so here we go. We are going to do half of the cards here, half of the cards on Vimeo, but I think you'll get enough from this one that you'll know it. It's, if it's your read pretty on, it's a general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't, right? The basic YouTube reader rules, right? You know, just the basics. We're going to be doing divine masculine, divine feminine. Feminine this side, masculine this side has nothing to do with gender whatsoever. I consider myself, when I work, a divine feminine but in the bedroom, I'm daddy. It's just how it goes, right? We're fluid that way, so <laughs> sorry if that's like shocking or made you blush, but you're a Taurus. It really shouldn't at this point in human history. Uh, so, uh, so take what resonates, leave what doesn't, check your other signs, because what you get for, um, for your sun sign is, of course, going to be different for your moon sign, unless, of course, it's the same sign, born on a new moon or a dark moon or something like that. Cool. Um, I think that's about it. Um, oh, uh, we're only doing 10 cards in this part of it, but if you watch the preview at the end, you'll get the 11th card, which is the first card of the extended. Good. Let's rock and roll. We're going to start with the Caroline Mace Archetype deck. Uh, all the decks that I read are in the description box all the way at the bottom underneath those really cool links and other stuff that I have on there for you if you want to go check them out. Let's do this. Take a nice deep breath. Because, good God, all that, ex all that explanation, all that exposition, just to get to what we're here to do. But you kind of got to, you know? And I'm a Virgo. Procedures. Breathe. Yeah, you focus on your breath, I'll focus on mine, and let's see what the divine does through us, shall we? Here we go, my collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher souls of all involved. I need three. Count them. 
three Caroline Mace archetype cards for this Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, romantic, satisfying soulmate contract for October 2020 or timeless. Whenever they come across this, please, I need one first for the Divine Feminine. What is her dominant soul power being alchemized, healed within herself that is helping her soulmate heal and all of life heal? And we'll get to that in a minute. Please, what, who is, what is the, the most dynamic, you know, the most dynamic, empowered soul archetype that the Divine Masculine in this contract is developing, healing, alchemizing from lead to gold. And lastly, thirdly, what is the dominant archetype for the contract itself? As though there were a third person. We got her. We got him. Them in the middle. Show me them. For this Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, romantic, soulmate contract. October 2020 or timeless. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> this feels really, really good. They're having fun with me tonight, showing me all sorts of sorts of... Now, before I flip these two cards, looking at our happy couple, we'll get to that third one in a bit. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 okay. So first of all, let's start with this. Uh, these are supposed to be triggering in their shadow so that you can see the contrast to the light. The shadow is the stuff you don't want to look at, the stuff that's buried, uh, or the stuff that you don't want anybody to know about, but you're well aware you're doing, right? It's, it's all that kind of stuff so that you can alchemize that, heal that into the light attribute led to gold, right? Simple, not easy, simple. Well, the thing is with a quantum entanglement, like a soul contract, uh, particularly a soul mate contract, as you heal, the other soul mate heals because that's how it is. That's what they're mates of the soul in that way, right? Um, so every time you heal your heart, their hearts heal. And whether you know each other or not doesn't matter. That's just how it works. It's sort of like an empathic bond rather than a telepathic bond, although that can be in there too. So uh, the part that the guides really wanted to stress this time, all of the pantheons were like the soulmates contracts are being activated, meaning brought together. The romantic ones is a huge infusion of love into this dimension, third, fourth, because we're actually anchoring the fifth. So it doesn't surprise me the two cards that I have in my hand for you, Taurus. Uh, one is a survival family archetype. The other is a divine family archetype. Now everybody has the four survival archetypes. Uh, child, victim, saboteur, prostitute. Please read Sacred Contracts by Carolyn Mace or at least do a cursory glance of her work in archetypes. She's a genius. She's a PhD. She's a tough cookie from Chicago too. I adore her. Never met her. She intimidates me slightly. That kind of smart and deep. Um, the Divine Feminine has the victim archetype. And like I said, everybody has the victim archetype. Nations have the victim archetype. Corporations do, right? It's just part of how we learn how to survive. It's about self-esteem and boundaries. Now, I'm going to read this in total. There's a light attribute and a shadow attribute written on the card. I will read that. But the Divine Masculine here could be triggering for some people. So I want to really preface it that some archetypes, if you come straight on at you don't kind of get what they're about. Um, so first of all, this is a gender neutral archetype. All archetypes are. They're neutral. Archetypes are neutral in shadow and light, lead and gold, as well as uh, masculine, feminine in that, in a certain sense, right? In terms of physical gender. We're looking at the priest archetype, and I know that's going to be a lot of trigger for a lot of people here. But once I read this, I want you to really take into consideration that someone can have the priest archetype and not even know it. It's just it's a soul power within them, if that makes sense. But we're looking at a divine family archetype. The divine family archetypes are essentially the soul powers related to the divine, right? Your spiritual power, where the survival family is about learning how to survive in the world. <laughs> you, know, you get it? You get it. And everybody's got different combos, but everybody's got uh, those for the child, the victim, the saboteur, the prostitute. Thank you so very much. Definitely Venmo or PayPal if I just taught you something that is of value. 
Uh, so let's read these, because I was a priest. I was. I had the priest archetype. You can have an archetype, a reason, a season, or a lifetime. I had it for a season, a good chunk of my life, but oof, it left as quickly as it came once uh, that contract was complete. I have no desire to high priest anything ever again. I don't mind officiating on a special celebration because I'm good at that stuff, but... No, <laughs> no, 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 my clergy days are over. Thank you very much. Want to get married? Uh, we'll see what we can work out. <laughs> I'm a professional witch. So let's talk about this divine feminine archetype. This is a big deal. Uh, the victim archetype. So be aware, of course, of the shadow. And this is something nobody wants to admit. Playing the victim for positive feedback in the form of pity. Right? So you elicit pity. Now, that, I would think, we would have to be aware of that you're doing. Right? So you know whether you do that or not. Inability to maintain personal boundaries, which is not so much you invading others. That's the victimizer, which is the third part of this archetype. Boundaries and victimization and victimizers, it's all about boundaries. Right? And the victim archetype whose gold side is the victor, V-I-C-T-O-R, as uh, the spoils of war go to the victor, right? The one who wins, right? So there is a very powerful alchemy here. So uh, how are you at maintaining personal boundaries? Now I'm going to say that's why this is tricky, because the, I, the idea of a priest with a victim I has no bueno, right? We know what that type of abuse is about, and I actually have to read that part of it in this card in a minute. But let's get to this positive side first, because this is your helping each other heal. Keep that, like the MTV logo, down in the corner, at least how it used to be when there was music on it. My day, MTV had music on it. The light attribute uh, prevents you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others. Such, I mean, it's really, you either, if that is disturbed in childhood development, all written into the script. Let, uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. The priest archetype. These two, I mean, individually, these two are, are fine, but you put the two together on the table, let alone on a video, let alone in a soul contract. Thank God it's soulmate. Shadow attribute violates the trust of your spiritual community, seduced by your own spiritual role. Now that's something that has nothing to do necessarily with victimizing somebody, but it is very easy for the ego to learn spirituality, particularly something with ranks and rules and regulations and you know, a hierarchy like that, oh, please, it can adorn itself with spiritual jewels left, right, and center. I mean, how much silver jewelry do I own? <laughs> but I'm a witch, it comes with. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's it's what this, with what's called the spiritual ego. And you see it, you know it, you're aware of it in others, but are you as aware of it in yourself? If you are the divine masculine here, and if you are the divine feminine, can you recognize uh, that that might be going on here? However, get ready, the light, as dark as an archetype is, is as bright and as its light, and the converse is also true. As bright and brilliant as the lover archetype is, as it's fucked up and twisted as it is in its shadow, and it's just how it works. I didn't write it. At least I'm not aware of it. That way, uh, the light attribute facilitates spiritual commitments. Facilitates for, to make easy, facile from the French, uh, easy, simple actually, to make simple uh, spiritual commitments serves as a channel of spiritual energy. So if you go by that archetypal definition, who isn't? Well, at least in our field, <laughs> in the spirituality and metaphysics. So essentially, if you're a Reiki one, two, three, that could apply to you too. So we have to kind of keep this in framework because it's a general read, right? If this was a more specific, I would certainly uh, go deeper for a private client. Now, this third card, I go look at. Why? Because that's for the extended. Yeah, that's the middle lane. The middle lane, where we have to save something for the extended reads. Come on, it's five bucks. Be worth it. I, mean, I think you're getting like 14 cards after these 10, so let's see what hits the table that I can show you for now, for free. <laughs> Never take yourself too seriously, Earth Signs. Breathe. Because we're prone to it. <laughs> Please. <sighs> My goddesses. Yes, this is a very... I get the vibe. I, I get the vibe. There is something very, very high vibe about this. And it's a soulmate contract, so please... 
My goddesses of Taurus, Demeter in particular, please, one card in clarity. What's going on inside of them in this uh, Taurus collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, romantic, soulmate contract? October 2020, or time, I'm seeing what you're showing me, please. Uh, one for the Divine Feminine. What's going on inside of her, the yin? What's going in, on inside of the Divine Masculine, the yang? The yang. And what's going on in the interior of the contract itself? What contract, you may ask? The Taurus Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, sign, Happy, Healthy, Wealthy, Wise, Intimate, Sexual, Romantic, Soulmate Contract. October 2020 or timeless deck drop. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> well, we've got the eight of uh, of blades, the eight of swords, essentially uh, going on. So an intense focus inward, at least the card of criticism. Now, the criticism itself, like an archetype, is neutral, right? Critical thinking, critical writing, critical care unit. Criticism doesn't even necessarily only refer to being critical. As much as it can be a critical moment, a critical thought, critical mass, right? Look at that. What's that critical mass? Look up, uh, what is it, the hundredth monkey uh, thing? A hundred monkeys learned how to wash a sweet potato, and then every monkey of that species in the world learned how to do it, right? So there's a lot more meaning to this word. Now, I know in the traditional tarot, it's blindfolded and bound with a bunch of swords sticking around you, which means there's a lot of mental focus going on here. So if this victim... I hate to say that word, right? I could say victim victor archetype, but that's a little crazy. Let's say the divine feminine with the victim archetype because everybody's got it. There is a deep introspection going on here, a deep focus inward, and that absolutely could be a spiritual thing, but doing it first through the mind, right? Um, I believe, in truth, the mind cannot heal itself, right? Because it's, it, the mind needs healing too. It's the soul that can heal the mind. Uh, but the mind is a tool. It's not who we are, right? So the ability to perhaps really intently focus on maybe... See, the other part, we've talked about boundaries, but the other part is self-esteem. The guardian of the victim archetype and self-esteem is not a noun, it's a verb. And I really wish we could get off this thing of thinking of it as something that you have or something that you don't. I learned that from Carolyn Mace too. I learned a lot. From Carolyn Mace, Terry Pratchett, Matt Kahn, at least at this point, those are the three I can pull off the top of my head. Um, but, but that really deep focus intent on self, right? Like, there's pain in here. Why would the victim archetype pop up if the person had that completely alchemized? I don't know anybody who has the victim archetype completely alchemized. I, I'll, I'll say the Dalai Lama got kicked out of his country and he's still compassionate and loving. Talk about boundaries that no one can touch, right? Well, he is the reincarnation of the Buddha. <laughs> Just saying, right? So perhaps something really deep and introspective here, because what we've got going on in here with the priest, what's going inside of him is five of cups, the storm, emotional upset, regardless of reason why. There is a there is tumult here. Now remember, this is not twin flame. Twin flames are tricky and turbulent and traumatic, and they teach you how to heal yourself. How lovely! <laughs> and they are. You need bunches of those to be the mate of your own soul, so that you can participate in a healthy way in a soulmate contract, particularly the romantic sexual ones. You know. Uh, they're saying it's different. Like, if if you're a mother who has a child and the child becomes a mother, then the relationship with the mother and the mother, they, they see each other, right, in, in a different way, right? Um, but with lovers, that, that can be hard, the romantic part of it. Um, so I'm going to keep going. We really get that. I mean, I don't have to go that deep into this. There is some... It's it, We'll see the next cards that go down, what's going on in the outer, uh, because you may not be aware of this if the victim is not in communication with the priest. Oh, that sounds so horrible. <laughs> the Divine Feminine is not in communication with the Divine Masculine. Let's, fine, let's keep going. It feels a little ooky, and I don't think the ooky is about this reading. I think it's just the connotation of it in my second chakra going Bleh. So everyone, please, let's talk to the gods, shall we? Nice deep breath. Oh. Bliss. Oh, thank you. My gods were clearing out my energy field in one breath. 
please, one card uh, each, one card each in clarity for this Taurus Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign, Happy, Healthy, Wealthy, Wise, Intimate, Sexual, Soulmate, Romantic Contract for this Taurus Collective, please, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign, what's going on for this Divine Feminine, October 2020, or Timeless, with that Nine of Blades, I'll take top card, um, and same for the Divine Masculine, he's at Storm there, we got the Nine of Blades there, we've got the Five of Cups, Oh no, sorry. That is the Nine of Blades. I got my own tarot deck from mine, but the Nine of Blades, I'm sorry, criticism. This is not the Eight. This is the Nine. This is Sleepless Nights. Oh, this is, I mean, that thing of criticism is still focusing on there. It's getting to the point there. But I, I got that confused with, I never do that unless that's in there too. There might be a lot of mental stuff going on here. Not to say that somebody's mentally unbalanced. I'm going to call that out in a general read. Uh, but that there's definitely a near, I would say, sleepless night obsessive focus about this as well. So we'll see what that is, the external, the yang from the gods. Please... Yeah, these two can help each other heal. We just got to get a little bit more info on the table. What's the outer part? What's the yang here for this priest in this uh, Taurus soulmate contract? And then what is for the overall contract? We've got the yin for the extended reading. Can you give us the yang, please? That one, that one. Okay. All righty, all righty. Alrighty, so the victim archetype is dealing with the Nine of Blades on the inside, and I apologize for that, but they really did flash me blindfolded Eight of Swords from, uh, from uh, right away, Pamela Coleman-Smith, and the Four of Cups on the outside. So there is dissatisfaction here, and there's a lot of stuff going on in this contract right now. Now, this is starting to feel a little twin flamey, but see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Soulmates are not happily ever after either. You help each other heal, which means you go through, through things together that you have to heal together. Do you get it? But you do, right? If you hang in there, you do. It's a return to love. You're just always returning to love. So there is dissatisfaction here on the outside and it feels like she's expressing it too, right? Four of Cups is sort of like, meh. It's not just meh. Not with this going on inside. No, 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 no. So there, there's a process of healing already in play here, probably if, if the Divine Feminine is doing the internal work, right? Looking within, taking and applying what she's learned from other relationships in terms of, of how to love oneself, how to heal oneself, how to care for oneself, right? Those boundaries and that self-esteem. Just no one can give you self-esteem. If you're looking to get a sense of self-worth and esteem, a high estimation from somebody else, give it to yourself. I mean, it's so cliche. But it's absolutely the truth. Uh, well, then what's going on with this priest here? We got the storm on the inside, well, and the ace of wands on the outside. So this could be somebody carrying a piece of inspiration, or at least is inspired. I mean, a challenge of spiritual energy, but inside there is this movement, this change of emotion. Not just five of cups, the storm, but all storms pass. So to hold the ace of wands, now that's Zeus, by the way, in the mythic tarot, the ace of wands there, it's a mythic tarot, it's Greek mythology, my, well, I can't say my first language, let's call it my second. Uh, so definitely an inspiration, holding up a torch, holding up a light, a new beginning, Maybe these two haven't met yet. Oh, that would explain a whole hell of a lot. Maybe these two haven't met yet, right? Well, maybe we'll see. <laughs> maybe we'll see. But uh, definitely, um, I, for some reason, like out of the cards that have hit the table, because all of these feel challenging to me uh, if I was the one watching this video, but I will say this changes things for some reason energetically. It's just like a light was turned on in the reading. So maybe this priest really can bring some, some, something needed uh, to the victim here. The helping each other heal, like that's the mantra. Soulmates help each other heal, no matter the shape or the form. They help each other heal. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to dive into uh, the Whispers of Love 
Oracle, the voices of your higher selves. Now, like I said, this is a quick read. I mean, it's still going to be like 40 minutes, I'm sure, because it's me. Uh, but uh, let's see what they have to say about this. And then well, I'll pop up the picture at the end like I usually do. And uh, then we'll hop over to the... Um, the extended. This is interesting. It's it's more than got my attention. It's got my investment, and I don't have any planets in Taurus. Breathe. <laughs> you never know who you're dating, Mark, if you don't have their birth charts. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. Please breathe. The higher selves of all involved. Fifth dimension above. Thank you so much. Your clarity and kindness is always um, um, so helpful. Please, uh, three cards in clarity. One for the divine feminine, one for the divine masculine, and one for the overall contract. What kind of contract? The Taurus, collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, romantic, soulmate contract, October 2020 or timeless. Please, one for the divine feminine, one for the divine masculine, and one for the contract in and of itself for the extended later. <laughs> I just I'm having fun with this. Let me have fun. <laughs> okay. So again, we've got the victim, right? Four cups on the outside, just not happy. Not a happy camper, but don't feel too bad. He's in the five, right? So the inside, all sorts of uh, mental, possibly not sleepless nights, thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. And the, the whisper of love from your higher self, if you're the divine feminine, honesty is essential. To be a loving person, it is important that we speak truthfully and in a loving manner. And speak truthfully, I don't have an issue with. I had to learn in a loving manner because um, pain can, can um, hijack your vocabulary, if you notice. So the better your vocabulary the sharper your wit, right? So to do it in a loving way. So w what it is that she's going through, particularly because it's air on the inside and water on the outside, uh, a need to be honest. Now, maybe that's honest with yourself first. How could it not be? You're all going to be in different stages of that. If you're the divine feminine, uh, maybe that's what it is. You're looking inside of yourself to find your truth in here, or at least what's true for you. There is a difference What's true comes and goes for us, but what's truth has never changed. We're innocent souls that <laughs> have come in to play these roles in these lives and fulfill these contracts for our soul's development. It's just how it is. Um, doesn't matter who you are, that's the case. Um, we are all innocent children of the gods, but we are so the hidden children of the gods, hidden even into ourselves. That is just truth. Um, but that honesty is essential. Can you come from that place? That takes time, though. That certainly do take time. Again, these two might not know each other yet. Uh, what's his whisper of love? Spiritual connection. What a shock for the priest, right? Though he's at storm, there is an inspiration. There is a desire, right? Ace of Wands. Initiation of some kind. Spiritual connection. This relationship has a connection that goes beyond this lifetime. Now, so maybe he's aware of that. Maybe he's aware of that. See, now this is what I mean, going back and forth, right? Do you know which one you are at this point? Well, uh, I can tell you, like I said, we've got uh, two more cards to hit the table, bringing us to 10. Uh, like I said, you can get the 11th in the preview. But even the view that I'm getting of this right now, I get it, it's a little vague, but there's, there's something about the archetype cards here that I'm sure once we get into the extended, we'll be like, oh shit, there it is. But I do feel like the Divine Masculine Priest, through some intellectual aspect, right? The Divine Masculine tends to be more spiritual up here, the Divine Feminine here. And it's about the balance of that, right? We all have those energies within us. And that this is a soulmate contract. That though these two may not have met, if this is the more spiritual of the two, and I don't like using that word because we're all spirit, right? Such an ego judgment. Uh, but it, they might be looking for that kind of connection with somebody. Somebody that, that, that that's sort of their thing. Where this person in the victim might have come out of something a little bit more troubling and traumatic. Gee, like a twin flame contract. Um, 
Let's get your last two cards down. And then uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what's going to happen in, in the extended. And if it feels right for you, jump over. It's five bucks. Unlimited views. You can watch it until I'm dead or Vimeo stops being Vimeo, right? Breathe. <laughs> Isn't it good to be an Earth sign? <sighs> I think so. <laughs> my angels and archangels. I made them laugh. Hello, my angels and archangels of Earth. Please, right? The element of Earth. I need, again, three cards. From the Healing with the Angels Oracle by Doreen Virtue. I need uh, one for the Divine Feminine, one for the Divine Masculine, and one for the Soulmate Contract. What kind of Soulmate Contract? Actually, the Taurus Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus uh, sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, sexually romantic, satisfying Soulmate Contract. Uh, October 2020 or Timeless, please. I need one for the Divine Feminine. That's the angel she could call upon. Uh, one for the Divine Masculine. That's the angel he can call upon. And uh, the one for the overall contract. The, look, the, there's an importance to this and here's why. And this is something I literally have written in front of me, but I'm only going to say it when I'm kind of guided to say it. Um, there is an intention for the series of readings. I said it in the Aries one, I guess I'll say it now. And, and I wrote it down. May these readings help the soulmates heal so they may help heal this world heart by heart, so mode be and so it is, right? Which means that as each of them heal individually, they're already quantumly affecting and healing each other, A. As they come together, there's an activation of the soulmates, right? It's like it's helping with the planetary awakening of, of Earth. Um, all of that love, all of those psychic circuits activated in this new way, all at once, essentially, in terms of a lifetime or, or a, a timeline, particularly for 2020. You get where I'm going for? Like extreme things going on, extreme love coming in. And that's why I think not that we've been deprived the romance and the love that we want, we're being prepared for it, is we have to have the circuitry in place to do that, because think of all of those couples coming together after all these lifetimes, right, and that that soulmate love coming through, that love coming through, it's going to heal the planet. It's just a huge influx of love. Vibrationally speaking, quantum, it's just going to slam the fifth dimension, just click, click everything in. So this is your role and this is the deal. So looking at these angels that are in front of me now, these three angel cards, these are the angels to call upon. It's a healing with the angels oracle. You want to heal? Call upon the angel for you. And by the way, also call upon the angel for your other here uh, to be of assistance, right? To help each other heal. Well... Here's the deal. You've got the Angel of Dreams, Divine Feminine, and you've got the Angel of Emerging, my Divine Masculine, Taurus. If uh, Whether you are the Taurus, sorry, my Taurus Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, which either you are here. So what does the Angel of Dreams do? Well, I'll tell you, for one thing, will help you in your dreams. Your literal nighttime sleeping dreams appear to you there, perhaps. Help you deal with them. Lucid dream, that whole realm. But it's also that this victim, this, I mean, this victim, this divine feminine victim victor archetype. It sounds like Victor Victoria archetype. <laughs> Maybe that's what I should call it for now. Yeah, the Victor Victoria archetype. Um, <laughs> jazz hot baby. She got dreams. You have dreams. You want fame. Well, fame costs, and here's where you pay. Wet sweat. Fame. Sorry, I grew up in the eighties. Um, yeah, she's got dreams. It's like, girl, this might be. You might be guided into your dream. This could be something that you have dreamt of. And that's why honesty is essential. Do not deal with the fantasy aspects that might be going around in your brain of what may or may not happen in your life. This sort of thing is scripted. And if this is you, then there's a really, really good indication because he's got emerging that what would be emerging from him is the storm. So an emotional purification, a time of emotional change being expressed, but as the result of spiritual power here, this spiritual connection is going to bring this brewing storm inside of this divine masculine out. So if you're the divine masculine, what would you do? Particularly with the ace of flames, what would you do? What would the, the healing angel of emerging do? It would help you emerge. Because who's to say that five of cups is always horrible? It's just a new spin on it for me. 
All tarot cards are neutral. It's a spectrum from lead to gold. That's why I speak the language of alchemy. I like it. Um, so there could be a great emotional swelling. Maybe, yes, essentially. It's like she's feeling lonely on the inside. He's feeling all of this emotions changing inside of him. Fives are numbers of change. Um, as a result of this spiritual connection, and it might be if they haven't met yet, that they're kind of communicating through their dreams and it's emerging, right? It's like this energy is moving through him. And with the priest archetype, a divine family archetype, as I said, um, really, a channel of spiritual energy might be going through a spiritual awakening. Now, the tricky part with this, and I'll pop up the picture in a sec, because those are all the cards that are hitting the table here. You know what to do if you want to see more. Um, regardless of, of whether these people know each other or not, there is a definite alchemical process in place already. Look, man, I'm like covering my solar plexus and my legs. There's a lot going on in the inner here that I, that particularly because the angel of emerging might not be showing itself right now, uh, but will, and might be showing up in her dreams as well. Um, so let's pack up, pack up, pop up the picture. The very high vibe on this one. And it feels like the alchemy here that this one's been waiting to happen for a very long time. You will either know each other and that's been true, or this has just been something you have both been wanting for a long time. Uh, but I think it's getting really close to time. Take a nice deep breath. Magic clap. We've got the victim archetype again in the shadow, playing the victim for positive feedback in the form of pity, inability to maintain personal boundaries. And honestly, if that nine of blades there is about introspection and really pulling in and focusing to the heart of things, at least that healing aspect of it with that four of cups on the outside, that would make sense that she isn't doing that, that she is really getting really good at preventing herself uh, from victimizing or being victimized by others, a victim archetype. So if that is all introspection, then I really, really feel like she's off to a good start. And if not, if you are the Divine Feminine uh, here with this archetype, please keep in mind, everybody has this archetype. Every, I mean, even, like I said, companies, countries, it's, it's just how we learn how to survive in this world. It's the soul power of survival. So to really look at self-esteem as a thing, to take this deeper inside of yourself, because I get the Four of Cups on the outside, you're dissatisfied. You're not happy. There might even be some gloom here. And to know that the Divine Masculine Priest is going through that in the Five of Cups, like, so you're showing the four, he's feeling the five, there is probably an empathic connection here, right? It just kind of feels that way. You're just in different stages of it. Um, so it's like he's feeling it, but you're sort of going through it, if that makes sense. Not that he's not going through his own internal storm as well, but it's a, it's a bit of a quantum entanglement for me. Um, and, of course, then with this card of honesty is essential to be honest about how you feel. Now, criticism, we could take it briefly into that definition of nitpicking of yourself, right? Of picking yourself apart. I'm too this. I'm too little that. I'm not this enough. I'm too much of this. That is self-victimization, right? So if it's that kind of thing and you're shooting those arrows at yourself, this is what's really kind of keeping you in this more Four of Cups stagnant place uh, emotionally in your outside world. So be honest. Be honest with yourself. There's a deeper expression here. To be a loving person, it is important that we speak truthfully and in a loving manner. So maybe there is, interestingly enough, here's the word that's coming up, a confession with a priest here on the table, right? That this might be someone that you can really open up to. They, that might be how you meet them if you have not met them already. Um, and again, with this card of the Angel of Dreams, look to your dreams. I so rarely interpret the card this way. But with that intense internal focus with the Nine of Blades, the sleepless nights, if you really are literally not sleeping as a result of something going on that may have maybe tangentially connected to this contract, but if you two haven't met yet, see, that's, I feel like there's such a huge chunk of you that I haven't met yet, but there's a chunk of you that have. So that's, it's trying to make sure everybody gets served here. 
but if it's not then haunting your dreams because you can't sleep, then there is something about a dream coming true here, about a lifelong thing that you have always wanted that has not happened yet. But that the, why would the angel of dreams be there if not to like help guide you to manifest your dream? Because your heart's desires, your fondest dreams were given to you when you came into this body. They're part of the soul script. I didn't write it that way. If you were born into Judy Garland's body, you would want to click your heels three times and go home. It's just how it is. I didn't write the rules. I wouldn't write those rules. Uh, so looking at this divine masculine priest, right? The shadow attributes turns my stomach, violates the trust of your spiritual community, seduced by your own spiritual role. Sure, it fell prey to it. It's part of the, the, the process of going from egg to caterpillar to cocoon to butterfly. We all go through our spiritual ego horrificness, but good old dark night of the soul will burn that out of you. Well, that was a bit of a mixed metaphor. Uh, so the light attribute facilitates spiritual commitments, serves a serves as a channel of spiritual energy. I just feel like this is somebody, and this could just as easily be a woman as a man, by the way. Let's, let's keep that in context. This is gender neutral. This could be like a Reiki master or a healer, or but someone who, though may not have the title of priest or priestess, uh, may have the circuitry, might have the archetype, does have the archetype, whether they are aware of it or not. Um, and with that Five of Cups on the inside, there is emotional tumult here, emotional change. Like I said, there's a spectrum in all tarot. With that Ace of Wands on the outer, I don't know. I don't think it's like a harsh storm, or I don't think it's, it's, it's a bad feeling thing. I think it's maybe like excitement, but maybe an intuitive one if they haven't met, right? That all of a sudden this instant Inspiration has come in, and if you've ever been hit by a bolt of inspiration out of the blue, Ace of Wands, a new creation, a new desire, you know how quickly the, the emotions change, right? It can be very drastic and last for a period of time and then blow over, right? So that he has spiritual connection. This relationship uh, has a connection that goes beyond this lifetime with the angel of emerging. I think the information about the spiritual connection is going to be emerging more and more and more. So again, even if you're the divine feminine here, call upon the angel of emerging, right? Even if you're the divine masculine here, call upon the angel of dreams, right? These are the ones that are assigned to you individually, but as one of you heal, all of you heal, so why not pray for each other? Why not send healing energy and love to each other? Why not help each other heal, whether you have met or not? But one way or another, this is a very dynamic connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so in the extended, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get you three healing mantra cards by Matt Kahn. One for him, one for her, one for them. We're going to get uh, three Kuan Yin cards and uh, three Archangel Michael uh, Blue Angel cards. You get it right? Her, him, them. Uh, and anything else that needs to hit the table, I'm not leaving this one alone until we have, at least I have a better idea about it. So if you want, right after this, just watch the preview. Uh, uh, at the end of this, you'll see the first card down, which will be the archetype for uh, the middle lane, as I like to call it, the relationship itself. Otherwise, if this is where we part ways for right now, may the Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs be blessed with all that they need to heal, to grow, to learn, to become the best that they can be in this happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, romantic, soulmate contract October 2020 or timeless, whether they know each other or not, may they be blessed with all that they need, all the joy their hearts desire individually that they may find each other, help each other heal, and help heal this world heart by heart so motivate and so it is thank you so much for watching please do like subscribe hit the notification bell the previews next i love you my taurus signs hail farewell and blessed blessed be Hey there, my Taurus Collective Sun and Moon Rising Venus signs. You know, I got up, I turned off the camera, turned it right back on, set it right back down, because I'm in on this one, shall we? I mean, the energy's fresh in me. I literally walked to the camera, turned it off, turned it back on, came set right back down. So let's get up in this. Now here we've got uh, uh, the Divine Feminine with the Victim-Victor archetype. We've got the Divine Masculine 
with the priest archetype. That is so triggery for so many people, and that's part of the volatility I have, but that's part of the volatility that I'm picking up for that general archetypal connection in the world, right? Icky. There's something different going on here than that. Is there spiritual abuse going on here? Because that's what it looks like, right? The shadow and the shadow, really fucking toxic. But in the light and the light, this is somebody who has healed or is in process of, right? And this is somebody who really can, what facilitates spiritual commitments as well as be a channel of spiritual energy. So that's like I said, as bleh, as one is, is, is ah, as the other is how it works. Um, so let's look at our center lane. Now, if you're still watching the preview here, Oh my good God almighty. Now, there. this is a tricky, this one's tricky AF, as the kids like to say with all their abbreviations. We've got the martyr archetype. Now, the martyr in its shadow is a fucking nightmare too, but the martyr in its light is transcendent. And that's why Caroline Mace had them, ugh, it's so bright, these lights, it's ridiculous, but it's the best I got right now. Um, the transcendent nature flying through the air with roses, the transcendent nature. In fact, let's do the light attribute first, learning the transcendent nature of service to oneself or a cause. Now, that is definitely right there with the priest. Like if you were gonna match this with another archetype, maybe you would go with the priest, right? The priest and the martyr. But the victim and the martyr, there's a lot going on here. The opportunity to heal here is huge. It really is quite huge. But here's what you guys have to look out for in the shadow. Addiction to self-pity. So you don't think I'm just saying that out of nowhere. It's written on the card and you can't see it because my lighting is still effed. But that's okay. The martyr archetype is a very, very powerful divine family archetype. Joan of Arc. Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther. Uh, I mean, on and on and on. I mean, those are all patriarchal religious ones, but look at all those witches that went to the torches. And I don't mean the, the ones that weren't witches. I mean the ones that actually were, right? The ones who were just there and gave and gave and gave of their lives from womb to tomb, right? Martyred. Uh, but certainly everybody knows a martyr, but is it a reason, a season, or a lifetime? And this probably is not the total foundation of a soulmate contract, a romantic sexual one. I would think that this is happening for a reason, possibly, that you both need to kind of look at maybe your own self-pity issues individually. Again, if you don't know each other, if you do know each other, this might be an interesting conversation to have. Um, because everything, ugh, you're gonna hate this, if this is, if, if you're dealing with the martyr archetype, unless you've already alchemized a chunk of it, it's hard to get. Everything is here to help us. <laughs> Whatever rises, love that because <laughs> everything is here to help. Everything is here to help us, and the universe always has a plan, right? The the three books the MacCon has put out so far. That if you can get the transcendent nature of what this relationship is offering, there is a service here. And what is that service? Perhaps not just the healing of your own heart, or the healing of each other's heart, or the two of you coming together having this soulmate contract, but the healing of the world as well. There is something very service-oriented here, particularly on the side of the priest, right? Facilitate spiritual commitments. It's just sort of written here, and I think that's why I was getting that vibe, because that martyr card was on the table and I didn't know it, right? But I could feel it. That sense of stakes are high on the planet right now, I haven't noticed, right? So is there a, a, something, a transcendent nature here? Absolutely. This one may defy reason. So let's keep going, shall we? <laughs> Sorry, folks, in the, uh, the, the, the YouTube land, this is where we part ways. Have a lovely night, or jump over because <laughs> holy fuck balls okay